person. I'm Chris. I'm the pastor of Kindred UMC. This is a this is a Kindred UMC. Uh, not quite Fourth of July, but Second of July, the Independence Day celebration. So thank you all for coming and welcome. Uh, I have a few announcements that I'd like to make about the next places that we're going as a church. So we've been meeting, for those of you who are new and, and don't really know much about us, we've been meeting mostly through online videos and in-home meetings and Bible studies and meals and this kind of stuff, you know? And so the, the, it is uh, with uh, an excited heart that I can announce that we have officially met with a commercial real estate team who is now, we are now actively in the process of looking for a, a footprint in our community where we can uh, not only meet for ourselves, but also to partner with community partners and feed homeless and look for opportunities for 12-step programs and whatever else we can do for the community. So we are officially in the market for purchasing land. <laughs> In the meantime, because that process will be, you know, however long it takes, it'll probably be months depending on what is out there and what, whether we want to buy land and build, whether we want to buy a, a building and renovate, what, you know, who knows what we're going to find. So in the meantime, for the next month of July, we're going to be focusing on uh, sustainability. We're going to be focusing on the uh, a disciple's responsibility to the environment. Uh, in Genesis 1, it says that, we were given dominion, and that word in Hebrew is different than the word in English. Dominion is like this, like we're the controlling force, you know? But in Hebrew, that word rada actually has more implications for responsibility. And so for the next month, of, of, for, for July, we're gonna be focusing on sustainability, and we're gonna do what's called a sustainability challenge. Every week, we're gonna have a new thing, a, like a baby step in that direction. And so for the first week, the, the challenge is, can you eat one meal this week that is sustainable? Either locally sourced, uh, Greenwise at Publix is a good uh, source for that. And, it, and if you just don't even know where to start with that, then next Sunday, we will be starting Sunday suppers. I will be preparing a meal and everyone is welcome. We're gonna open our doors at 4 p.m. We're gonna serve food at 5 p.m. It'll be kind of open house. So don't feel like you have to get here at four or whatever. And I'm gonna cook, uh, I've already visited several farmer's markets and uh, local farms. And so we're gonna cook an entirely sustainable meal next Sunday and every Sunday this month. It'll be locally sourced or it'll be, you know, it might come from a different state or something like that, but it'll be confirmed to be like a sustainable source of food. Uh, so that's the first challenge this week. Eat one meal that is a sustainable meal. And if you can do that, or uh, sorry, if you can't do that, then just come next Sunday and eat fried rice with us and you will have a sustainable meal. We will also have vegetarian options. I'm gonna do chicken fried rice and egg fried rice. And if there's anybody else who has like uh, any dietary restrictions, just, just email me, text me, let me know, and we'll make accommodations. Um, and then we'll have every week, we'll have a different challenge. Um, finally, Today is a very special, it's not actually today today, but today is a very special day because we're celebrating a very special person, Nicole. Nicole's birthday. <laughs> and as soon as I'm done here, we'll be lighting sparklers and we'll be singing happy birthday and doing all the things. So I, I tell you now so that you can prepare thyself, okay? Um, one final thing, sorry, can somebody bring me that bread in that cup, please? Thank you. Um, uh, so in the, in the Methodist church, we have a tradition of communion, in, like every church, there's a tradition of communion. Uh, and often communion is, is a reverent, uh, you know, ritualistic kind of experience where we, we take it very seriously. And like, there's lots of room for that, and that's a wonderful thing to do, and I, like, we often should do that. Also, I think it's important for us to remember that when communion first started, it was based on having a meal with a group of friends and they didn't know what was about to happen. They were just having dinner 
It was a Passover meal. It was an important meal. But they were laughing and drinking and like optimistic about what was next. And that's kind of the energy I want to use today to talk about communion. Uh, I'm really excited about where we're going. I'm excited about buying land. I'm excited about our next steps. I'm excited about this month. And so I want to tap into that energy uh, for this Eucharist today. Uh, in the Methodist Church, there are no restrictions on who's allowed to receive communion. Um, and also, there's no restrictions on, like, if, you, if you're, like, not cool with that, and you're like, hey, I didn't come here for that, by all means, don't. <laughs> you are not expected to partake. Well, uh, you, you are allowed to partake or not as you see fit. Um, but every time we do communion in the Methodist Church, we tell the story. And the story is this. Jesus, on the night before he was arrested, on the night before he was tried and then ultimately executed, he was just having the Passover meal with his friends, his disciples, his followers. And they were excited about the future of what was going to happen. And during that meal, every element of that meal has a specific meaning. And so he took the bread from the table that already had a Passover meeting, and then he broke it in front of them. And he said, this is my body. And it's given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And I can only imagine how off-putting and weird that must have been for the people around the table. And they were like, okay. And they probably kept on eating and laughing and joking and drinking. At the end of the meal, there's, there's, uh, there's three cups during the Passover meal, and the final cup is the cup of blood. And what that means is it's this, it's this promise. It's this story that the Hebrew people understood that one day God is coming back, God is rescuing, God is going to like, draw us back together to be a community again. And he took that cup, and he held it up, and again, got everyone's attention kind of like this, and everyone was laughing and drinking and eating, and they were like, oh, oh, hey, shut up, he's about to say something. And he said, this is my blood. It's the blood of a new covenant, a new agreement, a new relationship with God, not based on condemnation condemnation or judgment, but based on forgiveness, based on inclusion, based on everyone is a part of this kingdom. And every time you drink from this cup, do it in remembrance of me. This is all right before everything went down. And so they passed this around and they did this. And for 2,000 years or so, we as a community have been doing this. And what we believe is that when we do it, there is something extra. There's something special, there's something uh, divine about when we partake of this meal together. And it might just be that you have an honest and sincere conversation with someone. It also might be that your life has changed and your eyes are open and your heart is different. Who knows? That's not up to me, that's up to God, you know? Uh, but everyone in this room is allowed to partake of that. Um, we're going to pour juice, and, so, and there's, um, because of COVID and stuff, I don't know how... You know, we've got new sanitary expectations. So I've pre-cut pieces of bread over there, and then I'm going to uh, pre-pour little shot glasses of grape juice. And uh, you are all welcome to partake. Will you please join me in prayer, and then I'll be done. Holy God, we give you thanks for what you've done. We give you thanks for everyone who's here. We give you thanks for the friendships, for the relationships. Um, and we hope that in this meal and in this gathering and in this celebration, that we would be drawn closer to each other and closer to you. That we would know more how to live the way that you want us to live. Uh, we ask your blessing on these elements. Make them for us. Uh, your body, your blood. We ask this all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for coming.